So we have a vertices, and then it says a pass through the point 0, 0,5. And what they ask us to do is find the standard form. Right? OK. So the main important thing, guys, is again, whenever you have a problem like this, um, where we don't know which uh, you know, formula to use, you want to write up your two, um, write out what information you're given. So the only thing we know right now is it crosses to the point 2, comma 3, and 2, comma negative 3. Okay, those are your two vertices. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, there's only two types of hyperbolas that we've dealt with, right? We can have hyperbola that looks like this, where it has a vertical transverse axis, where there's your two vertices, or we can have one that looks like this, where those are your two vertices on the transverse axis. Right? So, by what I've graphed right now, which type of hyperbola do you think we're going to be using? A vertical transverse axis or a horizontal transverse axis? Vertical. Vertical, right? So, once you guys get this plotted, you can kind of use a little bit of reasoning in sense and be like, all right, I know I'm using a, ver a hyperbola with that vertical transverse axis, so therefore, my formula is going to look like this. Y minus K squared minus x minus h squared all over a squared b squared equals 1. Right? Okay. Now, if here are my two vertices, we know right directly between the two vertices is going to be the center. So I notice how far is the distance of my two, two, my two vertices. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Half of that is where the center is going to be. So I can say the center is at 2 comma 0. The center is directly between the two vertices. It's also directly between the two foci, right? So if you know what two vertices are, or if you know what the two foci are, you can find the center, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so now you can also just use the midpoint formula you know, between those two points so you can find it. Um, so now we know what the center is, and they say it also goes through a point 0, 5, okay, which is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Uh, so now we look at our information and we say, all right, um, let's just plot in what we know and see what we can solve. So if I know that the distance, we know that A is number, the dis A is the distance from the vertices to the center. So A is going to be a distance of? Three. So we can say A equals 3. Do we know what B, though, is yet? No, we need to figure out B, right? We know what K, we know what H is, we know what A is, but we don't know what B is, right? Yes? Yes. Okay. So let's plug in all the information we know so far. So we have um, Y minus K, which will be 0, so that's just going to be Y squared all over 25 minus x, which is, or so therefore we have x minus h, which would be 2, squared all over b squared equals 1. All right? So now, what you look at, though, is like we need to figure out what b squared is. And remember, the y and x represent all of the points. y and x represent all of the points on a hyperbola. But we want to, but they're giving us one point that we can use to solve. Why do you put 25 Because A is 5, so then A squared. A is 3. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Y squared is 25. Huh? Y squared is 25. Yeah, maybe that's what I was thinking. I don't know. No, Sorry. So, therefore, we have, thank you, we have A is going to be at 9. Um, however, what I can do is I can plug in points x and y to then solve for b, right? Yes? Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So if we have y, we can plug in. So we can say that this is an x and a y point, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? That's yeah. an x and a y point. Yeah. So let's plug in those for our points. And I'm actually going to do a little work over here. 
So if we put those in for our points, we'll have 25, because y squared is, uh, y is 5, so it's going to be 25 over 9 equals um, minus, sorry, 0. Let me just plug it in there so you guys can see where I'm getting everything. Right? Now we have 25 over 9 minus, um, this is going to be 4 over b squared equals 1. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So now uh, what I can do is I can subtract 25 over 9. So therefore I have negative 4 over b squared equals 1 minus 25 over 9. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we can convert to 1, right, into 9 over 9 minus 25 over 9, which is going to give you a negative 16 over 9. Yes, fraction people? All right, and now we have a proportion, right? So on proportions, we can cross multiply to solve for our variable. So therefore I have a, um, this is going to be 64? What? Uh, 36. 36. Oh, I'm sorry, I was looking at, wow, I was doing uh, 4 higher. times 16. 4 times 9 is a negative 36, thank you. B squared times this is going to equal a negative um, 16B squared, divide by negative 16, divide by negative 16, and Therefore, you could have uh, b squared equals, don't give me decimals, let's just leave it as a fraction. Um, so we can say this is going to be, uh, let's see, you can do, do a 4, so you can do 9 fourths. equation for this. Um, well, now we know what b squared is, right? And that's all we really needed to figure out. So now I know what b squared is, so I'm just going to write y squared divided by 9 minus x minus 2 squared over 9 over 4. Okay, with which we could rewrite um, by multiplying it back up there. And which one did we, on our 31? Yeah, which we could, instead of dividing by a fraction, we could go ahead and rewrite it as y squared over 9 minus 4 times x minus 2 squared over 9. What happens when the two bottom numbers are the same? Sorry? What happens when the two bottom numbers are the same? Is that ever going to happen? When the two bottom numbers Well, what happens when the two bottom numbers are the same? Okay. And then it's an ellipse formula. 